Hey guys, what's going on? Jake here with Jake's Trains, and uh, surprise, I'm back. Um, I know it's been a little bit since I've made a video, but uh, you know it's been it's been crazy. Um, I've been traveling a lot for work, and it really seems that the videos that I do for like whenever I just post trains. Uh, as in rail fanning, don't really seem to be getting that many views, so I'm probably not going to be doing a whole lot of those. Um, but the other thing that you know I like to do a lot is do DCC installs, and that also has kind of been you know a don't how do I really want to put it a it's been a challenge really right now. Um, yeah, it's been a challenge really for the past couple of years. Uh, the good old fashioned supply chain shortage. Uh, I, I don't know how much more else I can really uh, describe that. Um, so it has definitely been a challenge. Um, I've got, I've lost track of how many engines I have right now that need decoders. Um, but you know, I had a, a guy reach out to me and he needed me to do some work on a couple of his engines. Uh, one is a UP 9000, which was an easy fix. It was just resolder the headlight back in, uh, changed the couplers out on some, uh, some PA units. And then we've got, uh, Dreyfus Hudson I'm working on still. That's one of those waiting games, waiting for the decoder to come in um, because he would like me to keep the PFA and the smoke unit on it. And yeah, um, I've got my Norfolk Combustion J that if you follow me on any of the social media stuff, I have made videos showing that the smoke unit works with ESU but it's still a big work in progress. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna be working on, uh, trying to get that accomplished. And then uh, I'm gonna be reaching out to a guy to get the PFA recorded and put into the ESU decoder because he really likes the, the MTH PFA. So, but the last thing he had me working on was this behemoth. The Ronda Turbine with the Tender. And when I say behemoth, I, I mean behemoth. This thing is a, a, extremely heavy. Um, and the only downfall with it is the fact that much like the older Athern Veranda Turbines and the U50s, um, is they are only eight wheel drive, not 16 wheel drive. Um, so that is the my biggest complaint with it um and this is another one it it does have a smoke unit it was not saved um well it's it's in there but it's not wired up uh so that way if i do figure out a reliable and safe way to do this then i can be like hey send it back i'll hook it up for you um, but then sadly i also was not able to save the pfa for this unit because little did I know whenever we got it in that it actually had cracked gears. Um, so that was the, the, the first thing that ended up having to need to be done was replacing the uh, eight cracked gears on it. Or I'm sorry, not eight, four cracked gears on it. And uh, so we went with the Northwest short line gears for that. Um, I'll put the part number right here for it. And then... Uh, put those in and then put a new ESU decoder in it. And then uh, he asked me to use the scale trains um, sound file. And I'm like, all right, no problem. Now, obviously most people know scale trains is a three piece set. This is a two piece set. And so I was able to make the two, the A and the B unit into one. Um, that way he can still run the A unit, which is the only unit on this one. He can still run the A unit with just 
the normal, you know, the normal prime mover in it. And then after that, he can hit another function, turn on the turbine part of it, and it will fire up. It's very loud. And then that also is kind of programmed the same way that the scale trains units are, where if it's just a prime mover, it kind of just crawls. And then with the turbine, it gets the full speed. Um, he wanted me to include that as well. So, and then also the rear tender light did not work. And the wires on the end also were chopped off whenever he got it. So, put a new LED in there, put new wires on it, and it's good to go. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and check the weight, a couple of heights and stuff like that. Keep this one kind of short and sweet, throw it on the layout for you, that way you can hear it, and make my ears bleed, and that'll be it. Okay, so here we have the tender to the Veranda Turbine. Um, it is die cast. The top walkway is not see-through. Uh, you got plastic handrails, which is a little bit different for MTH, uh, given their, their, normally their diesels, uh, all the handrails are metal. Um, but that probably would have just made this thing even heavier. Um, you do have a number plate here on the rear. You got a rear headlight, comes with plastic couplers on this one um as far as i know this very well could have come with katie's most likely came with katie's um and then someone changed it out but uh, you got your airline hose here nice crisp lettering on the side uh you got your silver trucks air tank and everything underneath brake cylinders um obviously metal wheels uh, no power pickup on the tender. Uh, no speaker or anything either. Uh, this is also not like scale trains where this does not have a decoder in it. Hence the reasoning of... Oops, sorry. Oh, no, I was right this side. Of needing these two wires right here. Um, they plug into the back side of the A unit. Let's go ahead and test this one's weight. Okay, we got the scale out, and I will say this tender feels very heavy, um, and it's not driven, so whatever this ends up weighing, you got to remember, it just adds to what the engine actually has to pull. 8.23 ounces. That is insane. Okay, here we have the A unit. Um, this thing is also very, very heavy. Um, it's got completely die cast shell. The frame is die cast. Um, so literally everything on here is die cast except for once again, the handrails. Um, everything is very nicely detailed. The roof is extremely detailed. Um, if this was still a factory unit, you would pop this off to adjust your volume and your smoke output, much like you would do on the tender on one of an MTH's steam engines. Um, and then the smoke comes out of here. Uh, and I will say with the smoke unit all the way up, it's, it's a lot of smoke. Um, yeah, you got your, your dual horns, one facing forward, one facing reverse. Um, kind of swivel front again. Uh, very much similar to the Atherns. Um, you do have lit markers, lit numbers, both sides. Mars light, headlight, and there is a cab light in there. Um... The door does not open on here. Uh, you have metal handrails. 
come to this side and once again see all the very nicely detailed sides these are your powered trucks these are bogey trucks um, but you do pick up power from all four sets you have a speaker here facing down and there's another speaker in here facing into the shell and it's pretty much all just hollow in here even once again with factory mth decoder protosound 3 in it um, you got a nice little window over here and then on the back side here you got another rear door but it does not open um, with a window in it reverse light ladder which is once again metal plastic grab irons katie coupler and then once again down here you can see these two little brass holes down here that's where those two wires for the tender plug in to to power the rear tender light so let's go ahead and grab the scale once again and see how much this behemoth weighs all right got the scale out all zeroed and here we go <laughs> 32.08 ounces that's nuts absolutely nuts just for record this is the Bachman Malay I just recently picked up and I had to add 2 ounces of weight to that to try and get it to pull anything more than like 3 cars because it's got no traction tires that is nuts. So, as you can imagine, this thing does pull quite a bit. Um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and throw it up on the layout. Check out the coupler heights. And give you guys some sound. Alright, we got my Katie coupler gauge here. It does look like that front line might hit a little bit but besides that it is right on which is pretty typical for mth let's go ahead and check the rear all right checking the rear it is pretty much right on as well now once again this tender does have plastic couplers on it I can't guarantee you if that is factory or not. Um, as this is not mine, I did not buy it brand new. The customer just said I could make a nice review on it. So I said, okay. But yeah, so rear coupler is all good. And let me go ahead and show you the... And so here is the connection between the two um, they are pretty much right on as well and then as you can see there there is the two wires going into the rear of the A unit for the power to the tender light okay so a couple things before I start this up I want to just make note this does not have an ESU keep alive in it. Uh, the customer did not want one. Um, plus, I mean, it pulls from every single one of these wheels. They're all clean, all fresh. Um, so that's, yeah, no worry there. Um, but this has the 58429 21 pin ESU low sound decoder V5. Once again, with the scale trains, sound file on it and it is partnered up with the nix trains decoder buddy this has all factory lighting still the entire a unit is still factory lighting i did not have to change any of the lights in the a unit the only light that was bad was the led in the tender which is probably the whole reason why the original people who owned this before this customer had removed the pins off the tender. So let's go ahead and fire this up, which is F8.
F0 from the headlight. And a customer asked that I did rule 17 lighting. So as it sits here in idles, the headlight will be dim. F5 for cab light. And there are crew figurines in there, which is pretty standard of MTH. F6 for marker and cab, or I'm sorry, marker and number woods. F9 for the motorcycle. That was F14, which is the radio chatter. I added that in to kind of substitute for the missing PFA. Um, F12 is pretty standard within MT or I'm sorry, not MTH within ESU as the dimmer. In this case, it will not work as we sit here idling. Uh, F1 is your bell. F2 is your horn. F10 is brakes. F11 is coupler. Plank. F13 is your sound fader that I install in the actually able to reach numbers. Um, ESU likes to put that in like function 30 or 31. Um, that is a key one to have whenever you've got this. So F3 is the turbine. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure if my iPhone speaker can pull that or pick that up right, but that is extremely loud. So I'm going to go ahead and put F13 on real quick. Um, so yeah, that is the Steel Trains turbine sound file on this with the dual NTH speakers. Alright, so let's go ahead and test out the movement. So here we got speed stuff one. And as you can tell, it does crawl very nicely. Here I wanted to make sure you guys could see the tender light. You can see as I tell it to move on speed step one, both reverse lights brighten up. There's two, three, four. And five. Let me go ahead and shut the turbine down. I sure hope my neighbors enjoy that. 
because my ears are dead meat. I fade again to turn it off. So, uh, all right, so yeah, that is, uh, that's it for this engine. Um, this is another one that we can check off the, the completion list, um, which I, I hope the customer likes it. I sent him videos and he really liked it. He liked the sound and volume of it. So, um, I'll be sure to tell him exactly which CVC needs to change in order to, uh, lower the volume. Um, and then all we got left of his is his Dreyfus Hudson. So, well, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if this is your first time coming to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And, oh uh, yeah, uh, if you have anything you would like to comment on or anything, uh, go ahead and put that down in the comment section. And uh, that is it. I will see you guys next time. I should have a couple more videos coming out here soon. Um, we might have picked up another new engine somewhere. I'm not going to show you the rest of it. Um, kind of going to keep that one a little bit of a surprise. And, and that's a brand new one. And then I've got another customer's engine that I just completed.